Okay guys, I'm here to give you an Ultimate Warrior, another Ultimate Warrior video. Um, since this is Ultimate Warrior week, I actually got a action figure of Ultimate Warrior a while ago and I never really shown you guys, but I got the action figure and I think it's uh, really cool stuff and uh, they did the d documentary yesterday and it was a very well done documentary. It wasn't, I thought this was just going to be like this. The stuff he did from the DVD, but it wasn't. It was just stuff that uh, happened before he died. It even showed the aftermath of his death. Um, they talk. He so he talked about how like, he gave everything to the business. He felt like he didn't just make the match. He made his life, and he the Ultimate Warrior gimmick was very good to him. And you had people like Triple H, um, Vince, obviously Stephanie McMahon, John Cena, Ly no. Seamus, uh, Batista, the, I think Ambos said some stuff, uh, Kofi Kinston, Cesaro, so he, they, they all said like a bunch of stuff for, and st actually Steve Borderman, which is Stin, said a lot about him too, and so did, uh, I'm trying to think if the Walsh could have said something, I think I, um, I think, yeah, I said Dean Ambrose, um, who else ended up saying something for him? Hulk Hogan and uh, Sergeant Slaughter, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, they start. They showed like this big video package of everything he's done. Him, his promos, his entrance, his wrestling attire, um, his him in the video games, and there was like the one this really old wrestling game that looked like an arcade game, which was cool. Um, his uh. WWE 2K14 appearance. Um, his uh, slim, when he did a Slim Jim commercial, so a lot of stuff. And they talk about how he wanted to be a bodybuilder at first. He was studying to be some sort of mechanic or something. And then um, he said that after high school, he went to Georgia Championship Wrestling. And um, he really wanted to be a wrestler. So what they get. The wrestler named Jerry Jarrett came and uh, offered him and Stan a chance to work together. And Jerry, the Ken Lawler talked about how these two guys were really young and active. Um, and Zeb Coulter talked about how he managed these two because then, then they ended up going to, I think it was WC, WCCW, um, which is, I think, it's just WCW. And then um, he talked about how they all had run class and they talked about how the Ultimate Warrior. Wanted to go. Ultimate Warrior talks about how he wanted to go off and do his own thing, but Stin just went with what the company told him to do. Um, so they went off and did their own paths. I thought that I think this is actually when he went to WCW. I think he was in the Georgia Championship Wrestling. Now he's in WCCW. So he talks about how they tried to put him in as a hero. His name was Dango Warrior, and um, the fans. There was just something about him that the fans loved, so the ma fans made him a baby piece, and. Um, he became a really big baby face, and so then he, Vince offered um, a, him a job in the WWE, which it was called the WWF at that time, and um, he uh, ended up uh, accepting, and, the, and then he ran with the Ultimate Warrior and, uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, October 24th, I think it was 1989 or something, um, or something, it was like in the, eight, it was in the 1980s. Um, he ended up having his first match on TV, and really good stuff. And then he he talked about how he ran with the Ultimate Warrior gimmick. He loved the Ultimate Warrior gimmick. He he wanted to make it something special. He didn't want it to be somebody that was just on the code. He talked about his run with the Intercontinental Championship, saying he loved that a lot. And uh, Dolph Ziggler says he remembers um that match a lot too, and um, how uh. Ultimate Warrior just came in and clotheslined him and became the champion. It was a special moment for him, one of his favorite SummerSlam moments. And then um, he talked about how uh, the him and Hogan match, and um, they, it was and it is true. They ended up saying uh, some stuff how they would uh, wrestle in different parts of the country, different parts of the country sometimes. How um, they uh, we really. Mm -hmm teasing the build up for this match and when it finally happened it was good stuff how uh after and triple h kind of mentioned too how after they had the match um 
he actually also mentioned like the passing of the torch moment. How when they had that moment, it was like the literal moment of the the passion of the torch, which I thought was really interesting stuff that he said. And then um, he wanted to um. Afterwards, he talks about how uh, how emotional he was about winning the belt, and he was really nervous the next night. And when he came out, everybody went nuts for him. He was happy with his win with the title. And then um, I'm trying to think. Of, uh, and then um, he talks about how um, he was the the storyline how he was supposed to lose the title to Sergeant Slaughter, and get the title. And then he, uh, him and Hogan were gonna go off in a feud, and him and Savage were gonna have. Randy, Macho Man Randy Savage were going to have a retirement match. And, um, that is, that never happened because Savage cost all the other match. And he was really happy about the ma how the match turned out. It was a really good match. He 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 loved, he said he loved working with Randy Savage. And he loved the fact that he, he let him be that guy that got to put his foot on Savage. And they talked about, too, when the, he was doing the Hogan stuff, that he was like the real next Hulk Hogan. How he got himself over to being the next Hulk Hogan, kind of Hulk Hogan guy. Um, and then he talked about um, how after this, I think he left after a while, and then he came back and uh, he didn't. He wanted to be like paid extra and stuff, um, and then uh, he got suspended um, during a match, and then um, he because he was supposed to get a shot at the title too. Um, he was supposed to get a second WWE Championship run or WWF Championship run at that time, which is the World Wrestling Federation, and then. Um, he came back in 1996, and the same thing happened. Um, it just something wasn't clicking with him. So then Hulk Hogan talks to him and, and to go into WCW in like 1998, and um, they, they were gonna have, try to rebuild that moment that they had when they had the when they had a match before. And um, Warrior agreed, so he, they gave and they also offered him a bunch of money. So he went to WCW, and. Um, it was a fail. He even mentioned how Hogan says that was like one of the worst top ten worst matches he ever had. Um, he tried to set him on fire with like a flame flow, with like a fireball, and it was like a fail. He, Hogan even blame. He says it was his fault, and um, it was. And Ultimate Warrior says if he knew that, it was gonna turn out, if he knew he, if it was going to turn out that way, that he would not have gone back for all the money that he did, and it was a fail. It really, and I'm going to maybe watch that match. It was at Halloween Havoc, I think, 1998. And then uh, he left the wrestling business, went on to do some other things. Um, talks about how um, he... Uh, and it also shows, too, like stuff going into his Hall of Fame, how he made finally made his WWE appearance. He finally talked to Triple H. Um, him walking around the backstage, seeing uh, Razor Ramon with the Scott Hall. Um, stuff like that, and then, um, him, uh, hugging Vince McMahon, I think, when they were doing the practice for WrestleMania, so stuff like that, and then, um, and his real name's Jim, by the way, Jim, I don't know what his last name is, we'll call him Jim Bennett, um, and then, um, they talk about a l this little video that they made called, like, the Destruct, I think it was called the Destruction of Ultimate Warrior or something, um, and they, it was just them trashing him, and it was really sad, kind of bad. They, uh, Hogan says he would break his legs. People were talking about how he couldn't cut promos and stuff, that you didn't know what he was saying, and it was like, that was not the story that he wanted. Um, so Ultimate Warrior sued them for this, and they went to court, and Hogan was supposed to decide which one he wanted to do, and this was in, like, 2009, so I think he was working with TNA at the time. So Hogan didn't know who to go for. Um, so, uh, Ultimate War. So then I think the court cases just got dropped or something. So then, um, Ultimate Warrior ended up coming back to the WWE and he was really happy to come back to the WWE. He felt like he needed to come back for this WrestleMania and finally make right with peace with everybody. Um, and then, um, Ultimate Warrior ended up, uh, get, getting put into the Hall of Fame. He gave, uh, he said he wanted to be inducted by Linda McMahon because uh, it was somebody that he was close with and he, it was somebody that he would go to if he had like problems or something. And then um, he gave Vince this book called The Little Engine That Could because that was like his motto as a kid and he really liked that. 
Um, and then he came out, gave his speech, and also, and the, you can see him and Vince backstage saying it was a great speech, and he really loved the speech, and uh, Triple H was back there too. And then um, he shows him coming out of WrestleMania, and then he, he it shows him um, coming out and uh, how happy he was um, to be to finally use the Ultimate Warrior gimmick one last time and uh, be a part of the WWE again. And his daughters were ha really ha happy um, about how it went down. And then um, talks about too in the Hall of Fame how he gave flowers to his daughters, his wife, and his I think mother-in-law. No, it was his mother. So he was really happy about doing that. And then we find out about the fortunate death that uh, he died less than 24 hours later and um of a heart attack of a severe heart attack and uh how uh he uh ended up uh trying couldn't be saved and stuff and it was really sad and everyone was really sad about it but Vince said that no one would want him to be sad and feel sorry for me they would want him to um have uh to celebrate his life and that's what we're gonna do so that's it. That's all that. Really, so that was his uh, documentary. If you have the network, I would suggest you watch it. It's a really well done documentary. I really like it. Um, I didn't go too much in depth into it because I kind of already gave my thoughts about some of the stuff, like when he got the IC title, when he got the uh, when him his match with Hogan, and uh, yeah. But I just I'm gonna admit something that I was wrong about the Ultimate Warrior. Cause, um, I I like I said I didn't like the Ultimate Warrior and uh. I ended up being one. Um, he actually isn't that bad. Um, I thought like he was just a mean man in real life because um, he uh, always would rant, rant about the company, um, and uh, he would just leave and not care about the business. But I was one. Um, I thought uh, you know, for the reasons he actually did this stuff was reasonable reasons, like taking them to court when they made a DVD about him that wasn't true. So. I'm glad, and I also mentioned that Hulk Hogan also apologized for him. He really wanted to apologize for him, and he accepted his apology. So, at least, ultimate, like I said before, Ultimate Warrior got to make peace with uh, the WWE before he passed, and everybody that did him won. Um, there's going to be another one on tonight, which I will be watching, and there will be another WrestleMania 30 fallout. But you're gonna, the next video you will see of me is going to be a TNA review. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um... Thank you guys for watching the Ultimate Warrior, and I rest in peace, Ultimate Warrior, and I wish all his family my deepest regret, and that's pretty much it, guys. Peace out.